Hey, John here. I'm going to show you how to make a, uh, a cable using an insulation displacement connector on one end and the other end. This is a DB9, right? And this is just a 2x5 header over here. Both of these are what we call insulation displacement connectors, which means they have little uh, teeth inside. You slide in a, a, what we call a ribbon cable, right? This ribbon here, slide it into the connector, and then you squeeze the connector closed, and a bunch of little teeth in here, like vampire teeth, reach in and come in contact with the little metal wires inside the rubber insulation, okay? Therefore, it is an insulation displacement connector, right? Both ends have the same arrangement. This one's already been put together. So let's look at the parts. And go from there all right so this end here this is the end obviously the header that is that in this case it is two by five so it's got ten holes in it right and you can see these little metal teeth in here if I get the light just right on the camera all right so there's little jaws and the cable wants to sit in this notch and I'm gonna squeeze this lid down and it's gonna bite in all right same with the DB9 on the other end you can see the little teeth in there Okay, a little bit shiny on the on the light. That's not too bad, all right? Now, remember, this is a 9-pin, and this is 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 9-pin cable, which will fit perfectly on this side, and then it'll be uh, narrower than the hole on this side, but it's okay as long as you take that into account and you're careful, and when you seat the ribbon in here, you push it over to one side so that the unused... Uh, pin, the, the tooth on the unused pin doesn't cause you any problems, all right? So it is aligned with the first nine out of 10 pins. That's all there is to it. Now, whenever I make these, I always end up with a piece of cable that's the wrong size, right? So this is, I think, this is a 25 pin ribbon here. Now, this particular one has color stripes every five wires. So there's a blue on this edge. You can't see it so well, I guess, on the camera, but there's a uh, like a light red stripe here, and then a blue, and then there's another red and a blue. So from the this edge here, the blue edge to this blue line is 10 wires. I need nine, so I can take my thumbnail and put it on the blue wire right there, on the blue line between the two wires, I should say, and gently with my thumbnail, feel it glide over one of the wires, and on another thumbnail on the other side, I can kind of shear it with my two thumbnails and get it started like that, okay? So you can see I've gotten it going. Now I can just pull it and it'll run down between the two wires for as much length as I want out of this cable, all right? Now I also happen to have a nine pin, uh, what are the odds, right? So I had a bundle of some nine pin cable uh, that's already been split off of something uh, lying on the floor that I found while looking for stuff to, to make this cable. So I actually have what I need here. So I don't actually need to tear one apart. But, you know, in case you need to know how, that's why I show you. Now, on a DB9, when you're looking at the male end, the pin sticking up, pin one is over here. All right. So the key here is to make sure that when I connect this connector here with the cable, and then the cable's gonna run around, and then the other end of the cable will go into this guy. Now, I need to make sure that pin one on this connector connects to pin one on this one. In other words, don't flip the cable over by mistake, all right? So you gotta pay attention to which way to put the cable in these. That's all I'm saying. Now, um, that's why these painted lines are all on here. Now, if you look, the blue line's a little bit closer over there, and it makes sense because there's five wires here, then a blue line, and then four. Okay, now if we hold the connector like this, we know pin one's here. If I put this cable inside here, thread it through the teeth, right? We can look at it on the other side, maybe a little bit better. You can see, first of all, you can stick the cable clean through if you want. Uh, and uh, there are times when I used to make cables this way. You then will we'll look at how to squeeze this and cut, the, you know, and, 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 and crimp it and, and get the, uh, the teeth in there in a minute. Uh, when you're done with that, you can then come back and cut this. But I've already carefully cut this end relatively straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish it in so that it just barely goes in there. It doesn't really stick out much. Okay. I want to make real sure it goes through the connector enough so that the teeth have something to bite into, but it doesn't really need to stick out. Okay. Now, when you do this, when I do this, what I do is I take my hand like this and squeeze down. You can squeeze as hard as you want. 
you're never going to get this thing to bite in. All right. You'll first of all, cut your finger probably with the metal housing over here before you can ever squeeze this shut. And if this has 25 pins or it's one of these with 50 pins, the odds that any human can be strong enough to squeeze it shut and cut through all that cable is pretty much zero. Okay. So what you really need is some sort of a clamp. All right. Now I've done this in every way from being very careful and putting it on the floor and literally standing on it with a hard soled shoe to uh, various, you know, you know, pliers and things. And none of those methods work. I usually end up wrecking the cable or if I step on it with my foot, it tips over and I bend it. This is the way to do these things, okay? This, I think this, I wouldn't have bought this. This came with something I I bought. It was like, get this and we'll throw in a, a free vice or something. Normally, I use a bench-mounted vice in the other room. It's a big burly thing. But I happened to find this while looking for cable. And this is perfect for this video because I can just swing the camera over like this. I'm going to put a little piece of cardboard there so I don't mar up my bench top. Mount it on my bench. Now, this has rubber jaws on it, and even if I use the one in the other room, that vise has all metal jaws. Now, you don't want to put these things in against a metal jaw because it's going to crimp and destroy the outer part of that housing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of perf board here and sandwich all this together like this and then put that in the vise. All right. So the only thing you got to do is get this started, and then the rest is all just friction with the vise, right? Just kind of get it in there. Now, like I said, I squeezed this originally with my hand so that there was a lot of friction on this cable already. You want to double check to make real sure that it didn't slide out, and I can see the little wire in there, and it's still lined up pretty straight, okay? And normally, I don't do this up and down. I'm only doing this for the camera. Usually, I'll twist it this way. And the reason is, and we'll go ahead and do this one that way too. The reason I do them sideways is because I don't usually do such narrow connectors. If you're doing a 50 pin, it's really wide. You have to do them wide wise, okay? So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to squeeze it down like this. Now I'll stop talking because maybe the mic will pick this up. I don't know. But what's going to happen is it'll close down. And eventually it'll click when this plastic housing uh, uh, locks in when the teeth have grabbed onto the onto the ribbon cable here. All right, so I just heard it click. I don't know if it picked up on the mic or not, but don't go any further. Once it's clicked, it's done. If you keep cranking this, you're going to just destroy all the plastic. You'll crush the whole thing. If it's clicked, it's done. All right, so loosen it up, take it out. Admire your work. You can see now this is totally closed. Oops. <laughs> Take it out. Admire your work. You can see now that the cable's in there. It's not going anywhere. The, uh, the thing is entirely closed around the teeth that used to be in there. Okay? Now, if your connector has one of these top pieces, you've got two options. Either it's the kind of uh, uh, a top piece that goes on like this and holds it around like that. Okay, or like this one, it has a slot in it like this. If you want to, you can put the ribbon through this slot, like I did in this connector here, so that the ribbon comes straight out the back. Okay, or it might be like this. It may be that you don't have a, a, a head, a, kind of a header piece for it at all, in which case it doesn't matter. This will work fine. Okay, very often you will see people wrap the uh, cable around like this and put some so form of a clamp on there. Okay, either with this straight out the back or not. Okay, we'll go ahead and put it on just for fun. Uh, when you when you make these, of course, make sure that you put this on the wire and slide it down to the other end before you put this on. Okay. Uh, you'll forget once in a blue moon, and and those are the cables that won't have the back header on. Now you'll see me. I'm just gonna cut this with a giant scissors. Oh, what is this like a? That's I think Sam's Club's label for like baking goods. It's NSF. This is one of those kitchen scissors. And of course, uh, it's a big box store. You have to buy two. You can't just buy one. So this one ended up, of course, in my basement. So I use that for cutting, you know, whatever. Circuit boards and all sorts of things. They work surprisingly well. All right. So I was saying, make sure you remember to put this thing down the wire first. 
Yeah, I'm going to thread it all the way to the other end like this. Again, that assumes you have one of the slot in it, and it assumes that you want to use the slot. All right, now I'm going to just put this one on by hand. You could, maybe you heard it click again. Same sort of a thing. All right, once it's clicked, you're done. That is on there. It's not going anywhere. Now, double check, sanity check. Pin one, upper left corner over here. Look at the ribbon here, okay? Now, the ribbon never turned over while wrapping around in there, okay? So this five wire spread on the left here is where pin one is, okay? So all you need to do now is make sure that when you put this in this end, that pin one is in the right spot. So where's the right spot? Well, first of all, let me say it really depends on your application because it may very well be that you're supposed to hook this up some other way. Maybe you're supposed to put it in backwards. It depends on the device you're, you're building. The device I'm going to use this cable with is, is this unit right here. It's my retro Z80 board, and these are the serial ports on it, and I wanted to use DB9s. Now, a problem with a DB9 is, relatively speaking, it's freaking huge. Look at how big this thing is. It is as big as two of these headers side by side. So I could either put one DB9 right angle connector on my board here, or I can put two of these headers and use a cable like this to hook up my modems and terminals and stuff like that. So I can get a higher packing density is the bottom line like this, all right? Now in this particular project, pin one with these giant slugs is aligned with pin one on the DB9, okay? Now this connector here, if I get the light to glare just right, I don't know if the focus is good enough. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, there you go, you can see it. You see this little triangle right there on the left? That tells you where pin one is. It's on this side of the row of pins I'm looking at, and it's on the front row. It's on the top row where that is. If you look at the other side of the connector, there's no such markings, okay? So when you're looking at it this way, that little triangle is, that's the end where pin one goes. You can also see a, a slot like this, a notch. That's the notch that's on the, this is not where pin one is, okay? If you look also closely, there's this giant slug that sort of sticks out the side. You see that bump on the top? That thing, if you look at the connector like this, you see the big bump. The pin one is up in this corner, all right? So there's three different ways to find pin one. Hopefully, you will succeed at one of them. So as I'm holding the cable right now, it is backwards. Remember, pin one on the DB9 uh, end was on the group of five, okay? So it's critically important that I either flip this over like this and come at it this way, because now pin one is over here on this connector, right? And I can stick the ribbon cable through this way, and you can clearly see that pin one is on the right side. That would be one way to do it, or you can leave it the way it is, and you can flip your cable over the other way, because you can clearly see that now pin one is on this side to match the uh, marking on the uh, edge of this connector, okay? Uh, that really all depends on whether you want to see the blue wire when you're looking at it when the thing is plugged in your board or not. Right now, I don't really care. I just want it to be incorrectly. So what I'm going to do, uh, let's go ahead and show the blue wire. Why not? You know what? Think about where it's going to go in your project is what you really want to do. Remember, I'm going to put this thing on my project. It's going to go right there. Do I want the cable to come out this way? No. Do you want the cable to come out this way? Yes. So that means pin one is over here. Cable in my hand, pin one is on the wrong side. So that means... I want to flip it over this way. All right, so here we go. Connector pin one on the left, ribbon pin one on the left. Now remember, this ribbon has nine wires in it, and the connector has ten teeth. So if we look closely, let me see if I can get this on camera. I just flipped everything over, which is fine. So right now, I believe my, my ribbon is in the right spot. And I'm going to play the same game, and I'm going to squeeze it down with my hand. Now, look closely. You can see this. there's a bigger black unused space on the left than there is over here. So these, each one of the nine wires in there aligns with the little teeth jaws as it sits 
up against that end of the jack, and there's an, gape, an, an empty hole on the left. Here's one that's already been crimped, right? You can actually look in there and you can see the unused tooth right there. Okay, so obviously this is where pin 10 is, and pin 1 must be on this side. And if we flip it over gently, we can clearly see that's where pin 1 is. You can also see the tooth over here, all right? So my point is, if you're going to use a ribbon cable that does not have as many wires as your connector has teeth, make sure you get it aligned perfectly. If you put it crooked or you don't have it right left to right, then the teeth can grab into more than one wire at a time. You can screw all that up and frustration will ensue. Trying to undo one of these after you've cramped it down is a giant pain in the butt. So get it right the first time. Just be careful. Check everything twice. So again, I'm squeezing this with my hand just to get a little friction on there so I can go over to the vise now. Now the vise is not going to, this isn't going to destroy my rubber tooth vise thingy like the other DB9 would have. So I can just stick it in there the way it is. Get it started here. Here we go. So I'm just dangling it down on the connector. If it's your first time, you may want to do it this way so you can see that your wires are okay even if you know what you're doing <laughs> okay i could easily screw this up the wire could slide in there i close it without knowing but now i can see right it's obvious the wires are all lined up just right and we just squeeze it down and again don't go too nuts i think that's good uh, it looks like this edge is closed further than the one on the right. It may not have been in the vise all the way. So let me go ahead and re-squeeze it. There's nothing wrong with that. If it's not closed all the way, put it back in and squeeze it down. This one, uh, you can squeeze a little harder than the DB9 because it doesn't have that metal housing that could crease and crack and break, right? So this thing should do just fine now. I'm going to double check my work. I got my five pins on the on in this case on the top part, four down here. You can bend it. You can see the big slug there. You know that's pin one. You can then know that you're supposed to put it on your project board like this or whatever header you want to put it on. Okay. Now, this is a pretty long cable, <laughs> longer than the first one. I can plug this into my terminal and fire up my app. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.